It's time for The Verdict. The Verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The Verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. It's time for The Verdict. Hello again. Welcome once again to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers here every Sunday morning and another good show lined up today. Yeah, we've got the... Uh two principal representatives of the Harding Fine Arts Center coming uh, this morning to talk to you about a brand new uh, charter public school that will be opening in September. It's an exciting concept. It's a concept that I think is unique. Uh, it just kind of fits in with a lot of the other unique things that Oklahoma City is doing nowadays and we have the two gentlemen who can tell us all about it, why it's necessary and what's going to happen and mm -hmm. what the uh, our viewing audience should be expecting. A lot of educational options anymore, and we'll discuss one of them on today's edition of The Verdict. Kent and I'll be right back. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guests. We are genuinely pleased this morning to have two fine guests uh, join us. Uh, across the table from me is a longtime friend, John Belt. John is a lawyer here in Oklahoma City and has been practicing successfully in Oklahoma City, and very well, I might add, since 1963. Uh, he is a uh, both undergraduate and law graduate of the University of Oklahoma. Uh, John has uh, had many awards and honors throughout his career. Just a couple are that he has been president of the Oklahoma County Bar Association and has been president of the Oklahoma Bar Foundation. Uh, John is secretary and general counsel <clears throat> for the uh, Oklahoma City Community Foundation and is, uh, is chairman and president of the Harding Fine Arts Center. It's his first visit to the verdict. John, thank you for joining us. I'm pleased to be here. Delighted to be with you uh, again over time and, and have an opportunity with Jay Smith to talk about this wonderful new school that we're opening. Well, we're pleased you're here. And as John indicated, on my left is uh, Jay Smith, the principal of the Harding Fine Arts Charter School. Uh, Jay is an Oklahoma State University graduate for his undergraduate work and then uh, got several master's degrees from the University of Central Oklahoma. He's been involved in music education for many years. Uh, his uh, job uh, right before coming to the Harding Fine Arts Center was as principal of the Claremore High School. Uh, Jay, thank you for joining us. We're pleased you're here. Good to be here. John, let me start with you. What is the Harding Fine Arts Center? The Harding Fine Arts Center is a fine arts high school, and it's located in, in the old Harding uh, facility at 3333 North Chartel in Oklahoma City. And it's a school devoted to, to making available to the Oklahoma City public school system and students uh, fine arts training in all aspects of fine arts, uh, ninth grade through twelfth grade. Why is it necessary? Are the, are the other schools not able to offer the, the, the level of fine arts opportunities? This is going to be an intense fine arts education, and uh, Jay will be able to speak more clearly to that, but, but it will cover all aspects of the fine arts, uh, dance, music, uh, visual arts, uh, and um, theater, and it will be a more complete program than you will find in any other school uh, available to a larger body of young people. Jay, let me ask you, how is this uh, Harding Fine Arts Center different than perhaps other charter schools or other schools in the Oklahoma City area? All charter schools have some area of specialization. There, there's, there's some reason that pulls them together uh, in addition to, of course, just a regular academic education. And, of course, our specialty is fine arts. There are a lot of ways to approach that. One uh, common approach nationally is that students Pick, pick an area that they major in. For example, they would be a, an art major or a theater major or a, a dance major. 
Our approach is different than that. We believe that, uh, particularly given given the diverse nature of fine arts and given the the situation in Oklahoma City that, that students really may not know what they're interested in. They may have talents and things that they're not aware of. So we are interested in creating an educational opportunity that is broad and diverse. And rather than asking a student to major in, in vocal music, we want them to be involved in multiple aspects of the arts. Um, our schedule is set up really to encourage the student to, to get a broad education in the arts. Are you teaching math and science also, or is this a well-rounded education, or is it just fine arts classes? Absolutely. We're, we're a comprehensive high school with biology and math and social studies and all those things. And another interesting aspect, fine art, uh, Harding Fine Arts Center is the first Oklahoma A-plus high school. What does that mean? A-plus is a, is a model that originated in uh, North Carolina, and it's actually spreading across the country. There are uh, 22 A-plus schools in Oklahoma as we speak all the rest are elementary and middle schools. And this is a model that uses some of the best practices, um, research-based practices, to increase student achievement. One important component of A-plus is that it believes that arts should be integrated into the regular curriculum, for example, into a math class or into a biology class. And, and at first that seems like a stretch until you think a little more deeply about that. First of all, arts are things that students love. And when we make connections, curricular connections, between math and the rhythm of music, for example, mm -hmm. um, there's an inherent understanding. You know, a student who's, who's an accomplished musician understands rhythm and the way that time is subdivided. For example, quarter notes and sixteenth notes. Well, that's, that's uh, absolutely, those are mathematical concepts. And to mm -hmm. connect that back into math, into the subdivisions of math, uh, makes powerful connections that students hold on to and remember. And of course, all of those things are possible in all of the arts areas. That makes me think uh, of, of elementary school and of kindergarten and first grade. It seems like those people knew that a long time ago and that's how we all started out, singing our ABCs and the like and, and doing fun things uh, and things we were interested in in order to try to learn. And somewhere along the line that concept got abandoned as we got higher up. Is, is there any uh, validity to that? Well, it's easy for fine arts to become fluff. I, you, you know, just doing singing and doing some of those things that we all did in elementary school doesn't necessarily connect to the educational process. However, the, well, when I did it, it certainly wasn't a fine art, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned the ABCs. I mean, I wonder how many people today, in order to remember the, the order of the alphabet, go through that little song that well, we all learned. Well, Mick's going to do it in our fourth yeah, segment right. today. <laughs> But the, the connections between learning and achievement, student achievement in the arts, is, has been something that's been of great uh, interest in maybe the past 15 to 20 years. There's been a lot of research done on, on learning. And there's a guy in um, New York named Howard Gardner who has really done some extensive research on multiple intelligences. And you know, when, when we were in school, if you scored highly in mathematics and in verbal ability, you came out with a high IQ. I mean, th that's, that's what IQ was measured by primarily, mathematical and verbal ability. Howard Gardner has uh, really expanded the ideas that there are a lot of intelligences that go way beyond mathematical and verbal ability, and why should a student who may not be particularly gifted in mathematics, but very, very, very gifted in, in kinesthetic ability, come out of a public school feeling dumb. We know people in our adult lives that have been massively successful that really weren't great at math and maybe even verbal ability, but, but in their area of life, obviously they were highly gifted and highly intelligent. And part of our A-plus model is to go back and recognize the eight intelligences and to actually structure the educational process toward those intelligences, recognizing that not all students are the same. John, let me ask you a question about the funding of this school. Uh, talk a little bit about how it's financially organized and the like. Well, the first concept you have to, to, to understand is that charter schools are public schools. So they're free? They're, they're free. They're not private schools, they're public schools. Uh, they're sponsored by, in Oklahoma, a local school district. In this case, our school is sponsored by the Oklahoma City Public School District. 
uh, they accepted our charter. They, we have an agreement with them as, as to the operation of our, of our school. Uh, from that point forward to the time we, we open our doors, we're funded in the same manner as public schools are funded through legislative appropriations. They pass through the city of Oklahoma City uh, public schools uh, system at the administration and then move down to us and we're funded in the same way and our teachers are paid through the same sources. So it, that's the funding that we have. In addition to that, uh, charter schools have received substantial support uh, by foundations, not just in Oklahoma, but throughout the country. Uh, it's been determined uh, through analysis that charter schools offer a new and and viable option for the traditional public school system, which has, in many areas, uh, had substantial problems in reaching our school children. And so th there's a desire to, to step forward and find new methods of reaching them. So we're funded as a public school. Okay. Let me jump in and get us to a break. John Belt, Jay Smith are our guests. You're watching The Verdict, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're discussing Harding Fine Arts Center with John Belt and Jay Smith. Jay, uh, tell our viewers about something that you explain quite well on the website, but uh, on your website. But uh, what are the artistic partners that you've uh, partnered up with for Harding? Well, Oklahoma County has a multitude of adult arts organizations from the uh, Oklahoma Philharmonic to Ballet Oklahoma to the Canterbury Choral Society and of course the universities in Oklahoma County, Oklahoma City University, Southern Nazarene University, University of Central Oklahoma, all of those places uh, have intense interest in the arts and, 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 and others too. You get into trouble when you start trying to name people, but yeah. um, what I what I've found in coming back to the Oklahoma City area after leaving in 1988. When I came back to the Oklahoma City area this past January, there's really been a, a, just a complete renaissance of interest in arts and it's very apparent to me in leaving then and coming back now, just the, the uh, incredible interest and support for the arts. The arts organizations in Oklahoma City have embraced this concept. Uh, it's The Harding concept. The Harding concept, yes they have. They've, they uh, have been enthusiastic in offering support and, and really to, to an amazing degree. And just one really quick example of that. Canterbury Choral Society is run by Kay Holt. Kay, Kay Holt uh, has a PhD and has experience. She, she ran the Dallas Opera Company and was a college professor. And Kay Holt um, can spend her energy and her time in a lot of places and she, she also believes that what's going on in Oklahoma County right now is an exciting thing and Hardy Fine Arts Center is an arm of Canterbury Choral Society. I mean, Kay, Kay is directly involved in... in well, how, what specifically will, for instance, Can uh, Canterbury do with your students? Well, Kay in particular um, it plans on coming out to Harding Fine Arts and, and using some of her expertise to teach, uh, you know, at a limited basis. And that's one of the most tangible ways that our artistic partners are being involved. We have, we have uh, many, many highly professional, cutting-edge people involved in these organizations who you could never hire to teach full-time, mm -hmm. but who will come out on a part-time basis, adjunct basis, and share what they know with our students. And that's one of the huge advantages that charter schools have over public schools. Public, excuse me, traditional public schools. Yeah. Um, we, I, I don't have to hire certified teachers. I mean, we're exempted from many of the laws that regular public schools have to abide by. Now, in the case of our biology and social studies and math teachers, we'll hire certified teachers. The very best teachers in, in Oklahoma County are applying, in fact. 
But Kay Holt is a great example. Kay has a PhD and is one of the most qualified people in the whole state, but Kay's not certified to teach in an Oklahoma school. Mm -hmm. Jay, what about physical education, athletics, what, those, those areas? Part of our mission is to prepare students for adult life, for successful adult life. And the competitive athletics, such as uh, ba basketball for boys and girls, and soccer, and some of those kinds of things, are things that, that our students will have available to them. Our big focus, however, is on activities that they can carry into adulthood. Things, things like golf, things like uh, Pilates, and just learning how to care for themselves. Mm -hmm. so, so our focus is not really so much on competitive athletics, but on things that are going to prepare people for mm -hmm. adult life. Is this ninth grade at this point? In <clears throat> we're opening with ninth graders only, and we'll add a grade per year until we're a full ninth through twelfth high school in four years. Mm -hmm. uh, John, let me ask you something that uh, uh, caught my attention on getting ready for this show. Uh, there was an emphasis a couple of times on a, the campus being a secure environment for the students. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? No, a part of the characteristics of a charter school is that they ha it has the power to involve families. Not just the child who's going to the school, but the entire family. And uh, that comes about because Charter schools are a matter of choice. No one has to go to a charter school. There is no requirement that says they must be there. Those families choose to be associated with a charter school. And when they make that choice, they're asked to involve themselves to a much greater degree than they would in most uh, public arenas. Uh, in in uh, Harding Fine Arts Center, for example, families are asked to spend 50 hours per year directly involved in working at the school. That may be mowing lawns, it may be going on, on special trips with the students, uh, it may be painting, uh, it may be doing whatever that they're well suited to do or have the time to do, but they're expected to be involved in the school. And when you involve the families and when you have mom and dad in the school building, being a part of that educational process then the importance of education itself takes on a new level. And the school itself takes on a more meaning when you see mom or dad in there working on that building to protect that building and make it better. And so the children have greater respect for it. And you don't have, I think we can say this on a broad level, mm -hmm. charter yeah. schools you don't typically have the kinds of problems that you hear so much about in some traditional public schools. Jay, I want to follow up on something you touched on earlier, and that was you said you had faculty applying from really all over the metro, and, and like as, as if they're lining up to get in this school. Are the salaries the same as in a traditional public school? We, we offer the same benefits and same salaries as Oklahoma City Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And what, what's the appeal? Why would a teacher uh, drive maybe a little extra further in their day to, to teach at the school? or why, why would they go with that little extra effort to, to want to be a part of this? Well, I, I think that there's, there are a lot of reasons. But first of all, um, there are a lot of teachers who share the love of the arts. They themselves were, were maybe an all-state flute player or the lead in the senior play or it's, it's some love that they have. And most people that I've interviewed and talked to see this as, as a really special community of people that are brought together with a common love. And as John just said, charter schools uh, have a high level of family involvement. That, that makes it an easier place to teach. And mm -hmm. the type of students who are coming there because they choose to be there mm -hmm. rather than they happen to be forced to go to the high school down the street. Is there a perception that there's less discipline problems in the charter school? There's not just a perception. There's, there are much fewer behavior problems in, in charter schools nationally. Mm -hmm. Well, that's got to be attractive to the teachers. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> uh, Jay, tell me about enrollment. You're, you're going to open in September or in the fall. Is it August or September? It's actually middle of August. Middle of August. Uh, for the ninth grade, uh, what, is your, what is your desired size of the ninth grade class and how are you on enrollment so far? Our charter allows us 150 students in the ninth grade. And the, um, we, we, have, we have about 50 openings left at this time. We are getting applications and inquiries uh, literally every day. The, the student 
the student situation is uh, students don't have to audition for this school. They don't have to prepare portfolios. They, they simply must have passed the eighth grade and they must be in good academic, excuse me, good behavioral standing in their school. So if they're under an expulsion or suspension, we don't, we don't accept them if they're currently under those things. But uh, it's just simply a matter of getting an application, completing it, and returning it to us. At this and point. how do they do that? Where do they get the application? Well, they can download one off of our website, hardingfinearts.org. We uh, mail applications out. Our, our telephone number is 702-4322, and uh, we'll be happy to get them information. Okay. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show. I've, I've learned a lot, and it, it's certainly a, a growing concept, charter schools in general, and the fact that this one has so much specificity. Speci what's the right word? Specificity. Specificity. I like that word. That's yeah. the only reason I'm on here. I like that <laughs> word. <laughs> what he said. Uh, it seems to be a, a good thing for the, in, in the trend for the public schools. And as you said, there are traditional public schools and there are charter schools. I think a lot of people are learning more about them. And it's through shows like this where, where people can increase their uh, level of education on charter schools. So we thank you both, John Belt and Jay Smith. Yeah, for thanks for your effort and your dedication to this. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Enjoy it. Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back. Welcome back to The Verdict, some final comments. We uh, learned a lot about the Harding Fine Arts Center with Chase Smith and John Belt. Yes, uh, not surprising to me, I've known John Belt for many, many years, and it's not surprising to me that he has connected himself with this fine endeavor and, and has nothing to gain out of it except making the city better. That's typical John Belt activity, is trying to do things for others, and, and, do, and whatever he does, he does well. Obviously, Jay is very qualified to be the principal there. It will be interesting to watch the development of the school. As it goes along, the grades progress uh, one uh, grade each year and see how that uh, turns out. I think it will be a fine addition to the city. Uh, next Sunday, uh, by the way, we're going to have another show on the Oklahoma City National Memorial. It's a different show that doesn't focus quite so much on the 10th anniversary of the bombing, but what's going on at the mm. memorial uh, uh, currently, and I think you'll find that mm. interesting as well. And uh, more information on the Harding Fine Arts Center can be found at Harding finearts.org and we always want to pass along our website theverdict.tv we'll see you next week